What's up gamers? This is going to be your guide for farming every single Gliok in Tears of the Kingdom. I'll be showing you how to take out each one, showing you all the weapons, and making your life very easy when it comes to farming them. Okay, we're going to be going for an overpowered setup to make your Gliok hunting lives a lot easier. So the first thing we're going to be needing is bows. Now the bows I suggest that are pretty easy to get are going to be located in Hyrule Castle on the first floor. So basically this is where the entire throne room is and you're going to want to climb up the the left set of steps from the main spot facing the throne and go up those steps and you're going to turn on these steps and then you're going to find a little statue that's broken over here hop on top of this and you're going to see a bow there and that's going to be the royal guard bow pick up that bow and you're going to get some arrows here as well. After that, you can go ahead and exit out of the front door where you entered into this throne room from and walk out. You then will see a circular platform down below. This is going to lead you down to Princess Zelda's room. So just go down here, down this hole, and you're going to be in her room. You're then going to see a fireplace and another royal guard bow over there. Go ahead and pick it up. And by the way, these will respawn every single blood moon. So weapons will also spawn when you need them to, if you want to ever come back and get them. Now, for those who watch my lino farming video most of you will have a lino bow that can do three shot now once you have your bows we're going to be heading over to the elden area once you're in the elden area we're going to be looking for a fun creature known as octoroks now octoroks are going to be really important because they're going to add enhancements on weapons i have a full entire video talking about this so if you want to see all the details of what it does with everything you can go ahead and watch that but basically the gist of what we're going to do is we're going to take our royal guard bow and because they have such a garbage durability we're gonna try to enhance them here so you throw it at the first octorok it's going to suck it up sparkle and spit it back at you and you're gonna get your first modifier this could be either white or blue but we're going to be going for a yellow modifier go ahead and kill that octorok because it can't do it anymore head over to your second octorok make sure to save in front of it because you're going to be rng'ing for a second modifier that is going to be yellow what you're going to be aiming for is durability plus which is going to let this bow last a bit longer during these fights bows are going to be really important for shooting gliox in their three eyes so that they can be vulnerable for you to attack with a melee weapon so i got myself a durability plus bow now if you have a lino bow from the previous video you're going to be trying to go for a times five shot so the three shot is going to be turning into a five shot so make sure you save in front of these octoroks to try to get a five shot so i have both of these bows so we'll be using both of these for the fights with the gliox now let's talk about a zoning device that you're going to need a lot of to make your gliox hunting very easy and this is going to be rocket shields rocket shields are going to be one of the most amazing things for these fights because they're going to help you get mid-air to hit, hit the Gliox again once they recover from you knocking them down, beating them up because they get back up pretty quick. So Rocket Shields are going to come in clutch for that. You're going to head over to the Zonai device right by Tarrytown located here on the map. This one is going to be able to dispense out rockets. So this is where I'm going to go ahead, grab some rockets and fuse them to my shields and keep some in my inventory at all times. Next up, we're going to be needing some armor. So make your way over to Kakariko Village over over here. Once you're in Kakariku Village, you can head over to this armor shop, which is going to have the clothing item in front of it, and you're going to see the person talking about, I hope my grandmother's okay. This is going to be Clary. And pretty much when you go ahead and look at the armor, oh. the prices are going to be really, really hiked up in the shop. As you can see, like it's like 5,000, 5,000, and 5,000. So it's a 15,000 armor set. And we're going to need that Radiant set. So to get that at a very discounted rate, we're going to head over to where the sister is so just along this way by across this bridge and then you're going to see the sister over here who's going to talk about wanting to make a porridge for grandma and pretty much the ingredients you're going to need is going to be hylian rice fresh milk and wild greens and a secret ingredient pretty much that's going to be useful now two of the big ingredients that we're going to need for the porridge is going to be found right in Hatino Village over here. So you're going to want to go past the dye shop right here. And it's going to be the next one over where this icon is. Yeah. So just head up inside. And when you're in here, you can buy the items of milk for 12 rupees. And you can go ahead and buy yourself some Hylian rice. You can find Hyrule herbs pretty much anywhere in the game. And the big final ingredient is going to be Sundelions, which you can find pretty much anywhere in the Sky Islands. And if you find them on the surface, they're going to be anywhere where you find Sky Island pieces on the floor. Once you have all the ingredients, you're just going to go ahead and cook it right over here. So I got my milk, the Hylian rice, 
the Hyrule Herb, and the Sundelion. So I'm going to go ahead and cook it right here. And as soon as you cook it, you're going to get yourself a Sunny Veggie Porridge. And then when you talk to her again, she's going to mention that she's getting worse and worse. And then she's going to realize, oh, what's that I smell? And it's basically going to be the porridge. After that, the quest line is going to just move forward. Grandma's going to be A-OK. -okay, and then armor prices at the shop. Instead of 15,000, it's going to be just 2,400 because it's 800 per item. Go ahead and purchase the Radiant set because this is going to be important for our journey. So then you're going to get the Radiant set, but you cannot get the bonus that we're going to need unless you get this to level two. Now, in order to upgrade this armor all the way to level two, it's going to take a lot of Luminous Stones to get to level one and also to get to level two. So Luminous Stones to get to level two, then you're going to need more Luminous Stones and Moblin gut. So pretty much you're going to be breaking a lot of luminous stones in order to get it. Now, the important reason of why you need to upgrade this armor is because it's going to give you bone proficiency, which means if you use any bone weapons, you're going to get a 1.8 multiplier on top of your attack when you are using a certain weapon that has a bone with it. It could either be the bone as a base or it could be the bone as the attachment. Regardless of what's going to happen, it's going to 1.8 times the total attack of your weapon. There is an alternative if you don't want to go around breaking a bunch of luminous stones and that's going to be the evil spirit armor which I have a complete video on my channel showing you how to get it. It's really fast I promise and it's going to be the exact same thing. The only benefit of the radiant armor is that you can keep upgrading it to increase its defense while the evil spirit armor is just going to have that bonus. So it's basically the glass cannon version of this armor. We now have an armor that increases bone proficiency and we have some really upgraded bows so we're gonna need some great arrows in order to do a lot of damage as well so what we'll be farming are gibdo bones now gibdo bones are gonna have an attack power of 40 and you're gonna be able to find these things in the gerudo desert the best time to farm a bunch of these is going to be before you clear the lightning temple quest this is going to mean the desert's gonna be looking very blurry for you and you're not gonna be able to see and you're gonna be finding a lot of these just walking around aimlessly in the desert and they also have arrows on them so you're gonna go ahead, kill them, farm them, and grab some arrows off of them. Also, during the main story quest line for the Lightning Temple, you're going to be fighting a bunch of Gibdos to protect a bunch of Gerudo settlements and as well as the town, and you can use these instances to farm them as you can get unlimited arrows and bows to keep shooting them over and over again uh, to collect their bones. This is what I did. I actually got like 400 Gibdo bones when I started my playthrough by just farming them over here. It's broken, it's OP, and I really suggest that you pick up as many as you can It'll do so much damage with the multiplier you get from the Radiant Armor or the Evil Spirit Armor. Now, for the weapon I'm using, it's going to be oh. the Scimitar of the yeah. Seven. And in order to start this quest, you're going to have to talk mm. to Kara, who's going to be located in the jewelry shop in Gerudo Town. So pretty much what you're going to be looking at is a quest where Kara is going to go and tell you to find Isha, who is going to be located in in the Taruma Dunes in the desert. And pretty much a Malduga is going to be surrounding this person. So what you wanna do is just head to the desert and grab this owner from this quest line. I don't have all the shrines unlocked in the desert, so I just teleported over to the Lightning Temple and ascended my way up in this area. And from the Lightning Temple, I pretty much started gliding north of it and i saw a shrine in the distance by a bunch of sinking sand so this is my location currently on the map and from here you'll actually see by the shrine a smoke distance in the back and that's pretty much going to be a help signal for where this person isha is going to be waiting for you so i quickly just built myself a vehicle using auto build to fly over to that spot and i started heading to it and you can see the mauduga in the distance as you're approaching this area and this is what you're going to have to defeat. Basically, you're going to talk to Isha and the quest for the missing owner is going to update. And your job is just to kill a Malduga. What you can do is hit anything on the ground to bait it so it'll come out. It's then going to jump out the ground. Basically, if you shoot a bomb arrow at a Malduga, it's pretty much going to flip over on its belly. And that's when you want to go ahead and take it out. Um, shooting a time bomb is also a decent strategy. But pretty much that's what you want to do. Rinse and repeat. Have a Malduga come out of the ground, bait it, and shoot it with a bomb. Rinse and repeat. Shoot it as it comes out of the ground with a bomb. Go ahead, beat it up, and then it'll die. 
Now in the desert, it's going to be very important to go ahead and kill a bunch of Moldugo since we're going to be using these bones on a bunch of weapons that we have, specifically the one that we're doing in this quest line. They're going to respawn every single blood moon. Here are just four Maldugas that you can farm in the Gerudo Desert and their location. So you can go ahead and just take a screenshot of this and mark it on your map. After this Molduga is dead, you're then going to progress the quest and Isha is pretty much just going to go back to town. You can then teleport back to town and then head right back to the jewelry shop where you'll see Isha and Kara in the front. Kara will give you a diamond. And then when you talk to Isha, Isha is going to mention some materials that you need in order to build this legendary weapon. This is going to be the Scimitar of the Seven and the Daybreaker, which is a shield. She lets you know exactly what you're going to need. So you're going to need 10 pieces of flint, which you can just break from any single cave you find. You're going to need a Gerudo Scimitar and a Gerudo Shield, as well as four diamonds. Pretty easy stuff to get. If you need the two Gerudo items, don't worry. There's a really easy way to get it. All you have to do is lift off from the Gerudo Highland Skyview Tower and then head towards this location exactly on your map that I'm going to mark up for you. So right from here, I'm going to mark up this spot. It's going to be a pile of bones right in front of you. Fly towards those pile of bones on the floor. As soon as you get to that spot, you're going to find a like in the distance. Make sure to go ahead and save before fighting this like because you're going to use RNG to get the items you need. Once you hit the like and you go ahead and kill it after reloading a bunch of times, it's going to drop the chest. Uh, and hopefully you get the exact item of the shield or the scimitar right away. And I got a Gerudo shield on my first try up here. So that is one of the items you're going to need to complete this quest. Now, right in the center of this exact area is going to be another hole that you're going to break and go down. Head down there and then there's going to be a bunch more rocks to break when you're down here in the West Gerudo underground ruins. Basically, you're going to be breaking a bunch of rocks down here until you bump into another like. Once you find this like, go ahead and save in front of it and you're going to just reload until you get your scimitar. Once you get your scimitar, you have your four diamonds and you have your flint. Go back to Isha in Gruro Town and Isha will give you this lovely weapon, which will have 28 damage. And because it's a Gerudo weapon, it's going to double the attack of whatever you attach to this weapon. If this weapon happens to get damaged while hunting Gleox or any time that you hit something with it, here's what you're going to have to do. Head over to Tarrytown and then you're going to talk to the breakdown shop person over here and then you're going to select the weapon. That is going to separate the Molduga bone from the Scimitar of the Seven. Then what you're going to do in order to repair the Scimitar of the Seven is going to head over to the Elden area. Now when you're in the Elden area, you're then going to find an Octorok. If you try to throw the Scimitar at an Octorok, Octorok, it won't repair it because legendary weapons cannot get repaired by Octorok. What you want to do is fuse the scimitar of the seven to the base of another weapon. So basically you're holding a regular weapon that can be repaired and the scimitar is going to be on top of that. Then the Octorok will suck it up, repair it and spit it back at you. After that, you can go ahead right back to Tarrytown, unfuse the weapons, and then you're going to fuse back your Molduga bone to a completely fixed up scimitar of the seven. That's pretty much the workaround so you don't have to keep rebuilding new ones from Isha every single time and blowing diamonds. By the way, you don't have to use a scimitar of the seven as a weapon choice. You can use whatever you want. The only reason why I'm picking this weapon is because it has a 60 durability, so it can last quite a bit of time versus other weapons. And if you find out any better weapon combinations for this, you can put it down in the comments below. Now, you're also going to need food that gives you attack up. A great spot to get it is going to be in the Bronos Forest over here in this area. It's literally going to be all the way in the south in the Farron area. So you can probably head over to this shrine, which is by this stable and head over to this spot. Now, exactly the coordinates I'm in right over here are going to be a bunch of bananas. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab these mighty bananas. And bananas are very powerful because when you cook four of them together, you get a three up attack boost. And Look at, look at this spot. This is like perfect for banana hunting. There's even a little spot up here. Look at that. We got some bananas. Now, here's the cool part. So I have my entire pot here so I can make some attack up food because the benefit of having attack up food is going to be huge because attack up is going to be a 1.5 multiplier along with your bone proficiency, which is going to be another 1.8 multiplier. And that's going to get the bonus of being multiplied with your weapon damage. Uh, so that's gonna be some crazy stuff going on there. So you're basically gonna be stacking your bone proficiency along with your weapon. 
along with the attack up. So it's going to be a crazy thing. Now, a really fun thing to do if you're trying to hunt for a really long time and you don't want to constantly keep eating is going to be using dragon horns along with your banana. So here's the recipe I have right here. I'm going to throw that in and you're going to see this awesome buff of attack up all the way three attack up for 30 minutes and that's the beauty of dragon horns cooked along with any bonus food and you can find an entire video on how to do dragon hunting and farming for the parts in this video i have on the channel okay now you got your weapon you got your bow you got your arrows you got your food we're gonna go ahead and kill some gliox real quick if you're enjoying this content make sure to hit that subscribe button it helps so much First, we're going to be taking on the Fire Gleox. Okay, so just to put in perspective before I go into this fight, I'm just using a 28 power weapon. This is the Scimitar of the Seven, along with the Maldugga Jaw. Now, I'm pairing this with the Bone Armor set that gives bone weapon proficiency. I am aware that in Breath of the Wild, it was a 1.8 times more multiplier damage on top of what it is. I also ate food that gave me attack up. And it's all the way up at three bars. So I think all these are going to be combining to do a lot of damage for the monster. And the only reason I'm using a legendary weapon, the Scimitar of the Seven, is because it doesn't break right away. But you can grab any other weapon that viewer choice that you may want to use. For this Fire Gliok, we're going to be jumping off from the Poplar Foothill Skyview Tower and making our way all the way towards Lake Hylia Bridge. And as we're going to the bridge, my plan of action is to place myself in front of this Gliok. That way I can get myself in nice view of shooting down its eyes as soon as I start to land. So very good spot. And you might need stamina food as you're approaching as it's a little bit further out on the way there. And here I am. I'm dropping down and I'm entering arrow time mode as soon as I'm close to its face. Right. As soon as I'm there, I pop three hits. Boom. On the middle one, left one and the right one. There we go. And all the heads just go down and this Gliok smashes the floor. And I go ahead and just start hitting it. <laughs> and I wasn't doing as crazy damage as I thought because I also just realized I'm hitting its neck and not its eye. And then it's gonna about to get up again over here. And there's a Gliok. It's back up. So I say, hey, rocket show time. Don't want to give it any chance to get another attack. So jump up with the rocket, shoot its eyes with a multi-shot bow. These are just a three multi-shot bow. And that's it. The dragon is going to go down, the Gliok, and then I guess this time I'm going for the eyes, <laughs> which is going to take it out, and it's pretty much beat in less than a minute, and that's how the Flame Gliok is a joke, because this one didn't lift off or do its special attack, so if you're able to get it right away, it's probably the best thing you can do. You don't want it going up in its attack, so getting the jump on it is very important. Now, uh, the drops are pretty much just going to be Gliok Flame Horns and Gliok Wings, and the Flame Horns are going to be a nice elemental damage to have on your attack. So, yeah, there you go. That's how we take down a Flame Gliok. And if you're curious what its final attack is, it's going to go all the way up in the sky. Watch this. Then it's going to make this giant fireball. There it is. It's going to shoot it out. And this thing is just going to plummet down. It's literally going to explode. That is the final, oh my gosh. That is the final attack that creates a wind and that wind is gonna be able to get you up to fight the Gliok. So it, just in case, yeah, that's gonna be crazy. Okay, you can fly above it. But yeah, that's pretty much what that's going to look like and what you're gonna to have to do in order to survive that. This Gliok is gonna be located by the Gerudos Canyon Skyview Tower. All you gotta do is just launch off of here and you're gonna be in the air and you're going to spot a rock. Once you see that rock, you're just gonna head over towards that one and fly to this Gliok. And it's kind of hot here. So I just got a Nadra spike and I attach it to a shield. That way I don't die of this heat. Anyway, once you're there, you're just gonna lift off of this Skyview Tower and you're going to be looking for a stone when you're flying up in the sky. Here I'm in the sky, and you can see that stone right there straight ahead of me. That's exactly where the Flame Gliok is going to be, waiting for us on top of that. So this Gliok is not going to be flying around. It's going to be a stationary one, but at an elevated distance on a rock. When you get close enough to it, position yourself so that you are in front of the head over here. So I'm going to go around. He doesn't notice me yet, and then I'm going to drop and shoot an arrow. Now for this, I'm showing you this being done with a Royal Guard bow. Really simple one with 50 attack. And its head's gonna drop here and I fall under here. Now the problem with this one is its head is gonna be really like not in 
hittable distance with your weapon. So what I'm doing with the bone weapon here is just going and attacking its body as much as I can. And then at that point, I'm going to jump off. Now, the Gliok is going to scream at me here because it's not even under 50% yet, and it's going to start to figure out its attacks. So I'm just moving around here, and I'm going to grab a rocket shield because I'm like, wait, it's not really attacking me. There's a flame ball, but that's all I was able to get off of me. And then I just go ahead with the Royal Guard's bow, and that's 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 it. It's just dropped here. Then I'm just going to take my bone weapon and go ahead and finish it off. So the goal is to really get it off of that rock and take it out, not leave it there because it's a little annoying on the initial drop in, but I'm sure you guys will figure out a better way of doing that in order to bring it down. But I'm just showing you how simple that was. This is what the flame Gliok looks like with a Royal Guards Claimer, so a two-handed weapon. And it is the coolest thing when you charge it up. Look at this. You're just, you're just a spitting flamethrower. <laughs> And the flame doesn't run out at all. You just don't want to get hit by like a Bokoblin. He's a little protected over there. But just keep look. Look how long this keeps going. Especially if you have your stamina up. There you go. So for this one, you can take the Gerudo Highland Skyview Tower and head north over here. And there is a shrine that you can activate called the Gasas Shrine. Now, this is where I'm going to start off in the gameplay because this is my closest vantage point to getting over to where this Gliok is located at the Ancient Columns. So from this shrine, I'm just going to make a quick auto build and I'm going to head all the way towards this high mountain area. And as we get up slowly to the top, you're going to notice there is a grassy pathway. Now, if you take that pathway up, the Gliok is going to see you walking in from the front. And I don't want to approach the Gliok from there. So what I'm going to do is try to get a higher advantage as using a height here, climb up these rocks, and then I'm going to just go in for the glide. But this Gliok is kind of smart <laughs> and notices me a little bit earlier than it should. There it is. It noticed me. But it's good enough to get some arrow shots off of it. So I'm going to go ahead and knock it out right here. And it's going to drop. Then I'm going to switch over to my Molduga weapon. And the bone damage is just going to be insane as I hit it directly in the eye. And can we get this in one shot? Yes, we can. And the Flame Gliok goes down just like that. So for this Flame Gliok, you're going to want to head over to the Elden Canyon Skyview Tower. Once you launch from this Elden Canyon Skyview Tower, you're then going to look for the platform that has the shrine. Start to glide over towards that shrine as soon as you are in the air. If you need to get there faster, you can use your Sage to push you forward in order to get to that spot. And then once you're north, turn right and head down to this platform on this side. From this point, you're going to want to jump off and then start to glide. Now, this is going to be my, like I said, my favorite Flame Gliok hunt ever. And I know a lot of you are going to get some cool hunting points by doing this. So you want to basically just glide over to a certain spot. So keep going forward and then you are going to dive down. Probably at this point where I am on the map. Paraglide a little bit if you need to. And what we're going to be finding is a Flame Gliok that is actually flying right in front of us and it's doing rotations. Now, this Flame Gliok is technically semi-sky, semi-surface. And the reason is because it's going to be able to fall down to the surface. So I'm going to pull forward on a full skydive and then hit this thing in the face. So three shots and then it's just going to completely plummet. And look how hard it just dives. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take fall damage here. Boom, hits the ground, gets a little bit of fall damage, and you're going to have to go after it pretty quick. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do a cool attack here. There we go. And I'm on, <laughs> I'm on low health. So just go ahead and start hitting it. And the moment it starts to get up, if it does, there, like just, okay, it was not able to get up. So you can do that. It is possible. And that's how you take down the Elden Canyon Fire Gliok. That is so fun. That was my favorite one. Now let's move on to the Thunder Gliok's. Now this electric Gliok is going to be very easy. You're going to have to launch off from the Hyrule Field Skyview Tower, and it's not even going to take that much stamina to get over to the Colosseum. So pretty much you want to take your time flying over to the Colosseum, and as you get close, you wanna make sure that you're aligning yourself properly with the edge of it. You don't wanna walk directly in the middle. You can if you want a challenging run, but you know, you don't have to. 
Now you can see I'm approaching the edge right over here in this clip and I am right above it. And here I'm going to enter bullet time as I'm facing it. So I'm going to go shoot its eye. I'm going to shoot the other eye and I'll go for the third eye. I missed on that one. So I'm going to take another shot. So having stamina is going to help quite a bit. And as soon as it drops, it's this time I'm going to nicely hit its eyes perfectly with my weapon. And it's, it's I, I actually miss one time. So the speed can actually be a lot faster, but I'm actually able to take down this Thunder Gliok in exactly one straight attack line after knocking out its eyes and dropping them to the floor. So that's a very easy way of taking out the Thunder Gliok in this game. So you're going to be getting Gliok Thunder Horns and the Gliok Wings. Now, if you're curious what the Thunder Gliok does when it's about to die and do its ultimate attack, here's what's going to happen. It's going to fly all the way up to the sky here. And for the sake of this demonstration, let me put on my Thunder Helm. And basically, it's going to create these updrafts. Right there, they're going to strike the ground and create these winds. Basically, that's going to allow you to get up towards it. So if you have any weapons that are going to be able to be caught up in electric attacks, yeah, you don't want to be on them. So yeah, dodge those. It's just explosions everywhere. And that's what's going to happen pretty much when you're facing the Thunder Gliok. So you want to keep hitting wind sources that keep going up. And then you're pretty much going to want to take your shot at it, if you can. <laughs> but that's pretty much what's going to happen. So for this Thunder Gliok, we're going to be going from the Jojo Uu Shrine. And pretty much from here, you're going to just follow this pathway and hop down these paths, jump across this area, and then you're going to be climbing up this rock. Keep going across the rock, and then you will be able to see a good distance where we can go and attack this Thunder Gliok. Now, something I do want to point out, I'm going to be using the Royal Guard Bow, the one that we get pretty much right from the castle when we're approaching this one. So the Royal Guard's Bow is the one we showed, that is going to be 50 damage per one shot and this has durability up from the octa rock so this is the exact same one so this is as far as i'm getting close to these thunder gliox and the rain and thunder begins and uh this is where it gets a little dangerous so i'm gonna rock it up in the air here shoot my first shot and realize okay let's aim a little bit higher because of the drop so we get one and now look at that look how pro i become then i'm just hitting them with all three shots so you can see that a royal guard is enough that bow to take it out and then you just rush over and you start wailing on them with the bone uh, scimitar that we have. It's, just look at the amount of damage. And I wasn't even right next to it when I dropped it. So, yeah, just a straight up whack, whack, whack. And that is a total of 92 damage. <laughs> Taking it out with the bone multiplier and the attack multiplier. And the Thunder Gliok here is down. Okay, this is what the Thunder Gliok weapon looks on a two-handed weapon. Here we go. Watch this. Watch this. How cool is that? It's literally amazing. So yeah, Thunder Gliok weapons, basically any Gliok weapons are just insane. And you can just imagine the ice one's gonna function the exact same way. This next Thunder Gliok, which is located right over here, is going to be located over at this area by the Akala Citadel Ruins. This is going to be right to the east of the South Akala Plains Chasm. Now this shrine where I'm at north of it is going to be a very good vantage point to look at where it is and you can get a good surprise attack over here. So I'm going to pop my attack food, which got my dragon horn on it. It's going to give me a 30 minute buff and we're just going to fly over. Now for this Gliok, it's not going to be too bad to head over to this one because you kind of have a sky advantage, but they do spot you pretty quick. So Thunder Gliok spotted me and I pull out my bow and immediately grab some Gibdo bones. Now the Gibdo bones you're going to see on this one is going to do some damage because your boy is going to miss the eyes. But look at the damage it did on the body. <laughs> it did so much damage. I miss again here. And this is probably why you want to bring some key size to this fight. Moment this Thunder Gliok goes down, you can go ahead, whip out your bone attack weapon and just get to work on it. No matter what damage you're doing, even if it's a little bit of a lower tier weapon, keep hitting it. And then when it goes up, I'm going to just grab an arrow and shoot one eye and that should be able to take it down. If it had more HP and you're not able to arrow it from the ground, you're going to definitely want to just at that point go ahead and use a rocket shield. But yep, this is how you take this one down. Really simple. And you guys definitely are all going to have better aim than me. Now let's move on to the Frost Gliox. For this Gliox, you want to head over to the Paquita Skyview Tower, which is going to be located over here in the Hebra Mountain region. Turn around and just walk right behind the Skyview Tower. You don't even really have to dive off of it. And you can just glide right from behind here. And this is also another 
very cold region. So if you want to stay warm, you're going to need to have a weapon that's warm or a shield that's warm, or you're going to have to have the clothing that's warm. But that's not going to really work here because we want our full attack bonus. So we're just going to go ahead and full send this one with our hearts dropping. And here it is. We're going to approach this one over here. It's flying around. This one's not stationary on the ground. So some of the Gleox are going to behave very differently. Some stay still and some fly. This one's going to be the flying one around these stone pillar areas. So I'm kind of waiting for it to circle right where I can get a good face shot. And then the Frost Gleok is going to notice us here. So then we're going to get close enough. And at this point, got to shoot. I shoot my arrow. It's a little too short. So then you just aim higher. It's pretty much how you kind of want to do it. Key sides work lovely here or just really aim high with a five star bow or a five arrow bow. Then this is going to drop down and you're going to go ahead and just start wailing. Hit it, knock it up. Smash it to pieces. Go for the face, because if you don't hit the face, it's uh, a lot harder to get some damage off of them. There we go. And then it's about to get up. At this point, you want to get your rocket shield, right? So get your rocket shield going. But if you're too late, it's going to do a pushback. And if its health starts dropping low, this Frost Gleok will move to the ultimate attack. So you can see the Frost Gleok form this really huge cloud above you. And these lines are just going to drop these icicles. Now, the thing is, these icicles can be sent back up, right? And that's the only way you can get an advantage to get over to it. So that's one way you can go underneath something. But if the icicle hits you, you're going to die pretty much from it. If you try to climb these icicles, you will slip off. So that's also not a viable option. So the other option in this specific area is to just get on top of one of these rocks over here and then jump onto an icicle. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. I'm going to hop on this rock, get on this icicle, and then I'm going to just recall this and take this right back up. Now, this is going to lift you up pretty high right where this Gleok is. So then you're going to get that spot. You're going to fly up, power glide right to it. He's going to try to shoot you in the air to freeze you. But you're a lot smarter than him. So you're going to go ahead and just use your arrows. Use Gibdo bones if you can. And go ahead and do some massive damage. And then it's just going to plop to its death. Or either way, if it's not even plopped to its death, it'll fall down even with its remaining HP and take that fall damage. And just like that, you have nuked the Paquita Skyview Tower Gliok. Okay, this Ice Gliok is going to be located close by to the Gerudo Highlands Skyview Towers. You're going to want to make your way over to this one. And from here, we're just going to launch north and head over there. So let's go ahead and launch. And when you're up in the sky, you're just going to be looking for a group of stones. Oh, it's right in actually in front of us as we jumped up right over there. And we're just going to head towards it. Now, you're not going to really see it render in that quick. But as we get a little closer, we should be able to see it. And it is cold, so make sure you do uh, take your preparations with your clothing. But I don't really like to because I like to kill the Gleok real quick with all the good stuff. All right. So there it is. There's the ice guy right over here. And as I get close, I'm going to just pop my food real fast because I got to eat. And then I'm just going to paraglide so I can get a good enough shot on it when I drop down. So I want to position myself in a way where my arrows are going to hit it pretty good. And we're just going to drop about here. And that's when I'm going to open up my arrow time. And I'm going to select Gibdo Bones because they do a lot of damage. There we go on the first one. That's one, that's two, and that's three. So these guys are just going to fall down over here like this. And it's going to be a little tough over here to, to do some hits. And right now I'm using my Master Sword fused with a Malduga bone. So I'm not doing any like crazy. All right, so as soon as he gets ready to go, I want to put my shield up and go for a hit there. Get a shot there, and then this one. And then this guy's going to drop again. And then just finish it off very simply. And that's all with the Master Sword. That's not even that complicated. Not even using a crazy weapon for this one. Done. That's how easy it is. Okay, here is what the Ice Gleok horn looks like on a two-handed weapon. This thing is going to be probably the most fun we're ever going to have. Here we go. And it's just going to go right through these guys like that. Here we go. Look at that. Look at the look at that. And then we're going to go ahead and go again. Whack. 
<laughs> oh, so cool. For this next Frost Gliok, we're going to be going from the Rospro Pass Skyview Tower and heading all the way up north here by the Byron Snow Shelf. So I'm just going to mark that up. And what you're going to do is you're going to launch off this tower. And once you're up in the air, you're going to look for a little sky island that's going to give us a little bit of an advantage point instead of just us flying directly to it. So when you're in the sky, you're going to be looking for a sky island that is going to have a construct on it. And there you go. You see that one over there and you're going to make your way right towards that one. When you land on here, just go right over to this spot here. And then you're just going to jump off north of the Sky Island to where this Gliok is. And you're going to want to have a advantage over it by being up in the sky. Now, this one also is a Gliok that likes to rotate a bit. So it's going to do its little turn and you're going to want to time it again where its eyes are going to be facing you. So I'm just going to wait for the exact moment where I can get the best strike on it. I see its eyes. It's facing me. And this is where I'm going to drop. And at this point, pop up my arrow, take my shots at it, give the bones to do more damage. And it's going to drop. And the little drop is going to give it a little bit more damage. There you go. So it takes fall damage. That's the beauty of that. And then you go ahead and just beat it up. Whatever bone weapon you got, take it out, smash it to pieces. And you can actually get this one in one sitting. There we go. Done. Frost Gleox are a joke. I just hate the cold here. Now it's time to fight the King Gliox. The first King Gliox is going to be found in the depths. In order to get to the first King Gliox, you're going to want to head over to the Typhlo Ruin Skyview Tower. From the Typhlo Ruin Skyview Tower, you're then going to want to fly over into the Drennan Highlands Chasm. Once you go down into the Drennan Highlands Chasm, you're basically just going to follow the exact pathway to get into the area where Typhlo Ruins is. As you can see, the map is going to mimic it completely. So when you're in the depths, make sure to follow this pathway. And then you're going to arrive in the King Gliok Den. Make sure that you have all your rocket shields equipped, you got your bow, and your bone weapons are all nice and ready and safe to go during this fight. So what we're going to do is we're going to approach the area and you're going to be like, where on earth is this guy? And it looks very intimidating when you do see it for the first time because this one also has gloom on it. Uh, there's also a treasure chest here. So beating this will unlock that treasure chest in front of us. So what I like to do when I'm in the depths, I would like this guy to first spot me when it's <laughs> when it first locks eyes on me. So there you go. King Gliok sees me. And what I do immediately when the King Gliok sees me, I didn't want to run up to it and rocket show it just in case it uses its attacks. So I kind of baited towards me and you're going to see it's going to shoot off a fire attack, an ice attack and an electric attack, right? And hiding behind a little ledge here is what's going to protect me. Then I'm going to rocket shield up in the air, get my shots on it just like that. And once you get all those eyes, it's going to drop, right? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And then you're just going to wail on it completely, hitting it as much as you can and really trying to really hit the eyes. That's the most important part when it comes to these Gleox. And then the moment it gets up, what you want to do is, again, get another rocket shield ready to go. Lift off, freeze in the air, shoot all the eyes, just like that, and the last one. And then it's going to drop again. And then you're just going to take out your, your weapon and just hit it. So it's all about timing when they're about to get up to stop them from doing any kind of ultimate attack where it's going to make it a lot harder for you. It's all about reacting pretty quick. So even with lower weapons, this is possible. Now, if you're curious to see what a King Gliok final attack looks like here is what it's going to do it's all the way up it's rising and then we're going to see if it's going to be an rng so here is it's doing electric and ice at the same time so that means ice and electric should be falling there's the ice so that's going to be yeah wow so there it is then the icicles are going to fall down and what you want to do here is pretty much you can drop on this and rewind one of these and then you can kind of see what's happening here like right above you it's like this crazy thing happening kind of go right above it and you can see icicles that are getting ready to drop over here and then it's going to shoot a fire giant ball right after that so that's a triple attack you can see that and the fireball is just going to go and explode wherever it's aiming at and it does aim at you too so if you're in that ultimate attack that's pretty much what you should expect. And then you can go ahead while you're in the air and try to finish off these guys. And that should be the way to take it out if it does happen to reach ultimate attack. But I know you guys will not be dealing with that because you're so much better. 
And then after that, this chest is going to unlock. And in this chest is going to be one piece from the Twilight set, the Cap of Twilight. Now we're going to be moving on to the Sky Islands to take down three more King Gliocks. To get to this King Gliok, we're going to be going over to the Wind Temple. And from the Wind Temple, we're going to be making our way across this area to this shrine. Now from this shrine, we're going to make our way all the way over to where the King Gliok is located over here. So for this King Gliok, you're going to want to go ahead and teleport over to the Wind Temple. It is a little cold, so maybe if you're smart, you want to equip something that's going to keep you a bit warm. Now, from the Wind Temple, we're pretty much going to make our way off of this thing because the Wind Temple is much higher. So this is why we are going over here. Now, to get an angle, you open up your map and hit X and you can look to see where you're supposed to go. And you can see that little platform down there. And you can see all these ships above here, but here's what exactly the strategy we're going to do. We're going to head over to that island down there that has a shrine. That's going to be our point where we're going to make our way there. So I'm just going to go ahead, jump to the ship. And from here, we're going to equip our sage. That's going to help us push with the gust that'll bring us to this spot. Once you arrive over here, make sure to activate this shrine. That way you can just see where you have to go. So then right from this point pretty much is where we're going to have to fly directly to the Gliok, as it's marked. The other island that you see is a lot lower, so we don't want to go all the way down there. We're going to fly over with a flying machine and make our way there. And we fly. Once battery runs out, make sure to go ahead and use your paraglider and use the gust to push you forward. Now, this one, you want to time yourself where you can be right by its head. Sometimes you're going to fall a bit early and uh, it's going to be a little harder. So my first shot, as you can see here, I'm using the five shot bow. I'm going to shoot and completely miss, which means I have to aim a lot higher. So I got one shot on it. Got to aim again. So because I missed it, I'm going to use a rocket shield to kind of get a nice advantage again in the air. So there we go. There's one shot. I'm not facing its eyes, so I have to drop a little bit further. There's my second shot on the ice one, and there's my third shot on the electric. So remember, when you always mess up here, you want to compensate with a rocket shield. Rocket shields are going to be key to helping you on these. There we go. And I'm just going to keep whacking its head, seeing if I can do it in one shot. So the moment I see that movement, I'm immediately going to equip my rocket shield, jump up, and before they can blow me away, go for these shots on the eyes. There we go. He's going to drop again. And then you pretty much go here for the finish. And it's done just like that. And that's how simple it is to take down a Sky Island King Gliok. Really simple with this stuff here. And the first reward of the Sky Island Gliok is Sage's Well. All right, nice. To get to this King Gliok, you're going to want to head over to the Grudo Highland Skyview Tower, launch from there, and then head directly up in the sky and then just make your way down to this platform over here. So for this one, you're pretty much going to have to launch up from the Grudo Highland Skyview Tower and head over to this giant landmass over here that is in the sky. Now, I suggest that you have your Sage with you to help push you forward because that's going to help a lot. Also, another quick suggestion while you're in the sky when these islands are really far is to have stamina food because as you get closer, it's going to be a lot easier to load up. That way you can do the arrow time in the air. Now, for this one, I got pretty close and I didn't have enough stamina to be right by it to shoot arrows. So I figured at this point I had to drop down and try to recover my stamina somehow. Also, I totally forgot about rocket shields and yes, this is me about to fall, but I do jump up with my last HP bar. I try to get behind this rock, but the King Gliok does spot me on this one. So pretty much what I do really quickly is I fuse three rockets to my shield because that was the strat I told you earlier. And the King Gliok is coming in by using all its three attacks to do the beams. At this point, after it does its electric beam, ice beam, and the fire beam, simply just go ahead and do the rocket shot. Shoot it three times on all its face parts. That should be easy. It drops down and then go ahead and whack it. It takes more damage when you hit the eyes directly. If you don't hit the eyes directly, it won't do as much damage. And then as soon as it gets up, rocket showed up before it yells in your face. And that's what happens when it yells in your face. <laughs> You're not able to get the rocket as fast, but I quickly get up and I go for the shot. There we go. Blue eye and yellow eye. And this King Gliok is going to drop. And then just go ahead and whack its face. As you can see, I do miss some of my shots, which is pretty pathetic here. 
Be more better than me. And when you miss those shots, you lose that opportunity. Again, just rocket shield anytime. And if you add your Gibdo bones along with this bone armor, it's going to do a lot more damage, as you can see. And then I got to aim for the electric one up there, and it's done. There we go. So a five shot bow, Gibdo bones, and this King Gliok is down. And on this island, you get yourself a Sage Will. So that's going to power up your Sage's attack. The next King Gliok is going to be located right above Eventide Island over here. And now the best way to get over to it is by launching up in the sky from the Rebella Wetlands. From the Rebella Wetlands, once you're in the sky, you're going to make your way over to this sky island over here. And you can tap over at the Kuma Mayan Shrine. You can go over to this island over here and tap this shrine so that way you can make it a save point. At this point, you're then going to spin the device until you're facing this platform over here so you can have a better advantage. Once you're at this platform, you're then going to fly all the way to Eventide Island. So that is going to be quite a trip using a sky machine combo along with your gust pushes from your sage friend. The next Gliok is going to be located right above Eventide Island, and we're going to have to do a jump here. So you want to go from Rebella Wetland Skyview Tower over to this Sky Island right above. Now, this Sky Island is going to have a little pushy thing, and you're going to want to pay attention to where it's angled. So what you want to do is you want to twist this completely so you're facing this landmass over here. So you want to twist this thing that launches you over to this Spot right over here. So I look at my map, I'm making sure I'm aligned with where the Gliok location is going to be. And just go ahead and then you're going to twist that. Just like this. And you see that little island above you? That's where you want to aim for. So that'll give you a much of a higher jumping vantage so you can get there. So I'm just going to hop on here. It's going to lift me off right here. And that puts me at a better spot than just trying to fly off from there. Now over here, I'm just going to go ahead and make a flying machine because that's the easiest thing I can do. So there we go, my hoverboard 1.0. Yes, I am using the 1.0 version. I just like it. Is this something about the 1.0? The new one is gonna have a 45 degree angle so you can get there faster, but I'm, a, I'm a still a little old school here and I still have to make that one. So I'm just gonna place a rocket on here and I'm gonna lift off. Here we go, right to that island. And then I'm just going to start going close, close as fast as I can to this island. Again, if you don't have enough battery, make sure you bring enough stamina food. Tullin's going to help you a lot as you get close. And then when I ran out of battery, pretty much just jumped on my paraglider and got my burst in the air to push me forward in the wind. Now, once I was close enough, I just waited kind of for the Gliok to angle itself as close as possible to me so I could get the best headshot. So I waited and right about here, I drop. He didn't even notice me yet. And... That was the angle where I could shoot all the heads. So I go for the electric one. I shoot the fire one that drops. And then this blue one with the ice one just drops. Take this one out. Just like that, it drops down. And then I ran out of stamina here. So stamina is pretty important. So I'm a little bit slow here. But I'm going to just hit it as much as I can. That's a missed hit over there. There we go. Every time you hear that ding, that means we got a crit. So that's times two the damage we had. And I'm going to just jump up on the rocket shield, jump up on the rocket shield, and just go for the shots on all the head. And then the blue one's under here, so this one was a little tricky to get. This is redhead just blocking me. Okay, there we go. That blue one's still there, missed it, and shot. All of them dropped. So just whip out your weapon again. If you need to lock on, that could help, and you're done. This one was like less than a minute of a fight. Another Gliok down in the sky. This one is also going to be giving you a Sage as well. So it looks like all the ones in the sky will be giving you the same rewards. Congrats, now you're a professional Gliok Hunter, but do you know about this? Click on it.